really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Welcome to the show. Today we're going to be talking about legacy. Forgotten ones, how easily they can be forgotten. We're going to be talking about patriotism, we're going to be talking about Nigeria, all through the life of one man who, as far back as in the 50s, was the singular most important black man in Africa, if you ask me. And all this is in the book that's been put together from which we can learn a lot of lessons. If you stay tuned, we'll get to meet the author of this book and the subject of this book through his eyes and work his money to put together. We'll be back shortly on Seriously Speaking. The name Ujuku is familiar to a lot of Nigerians. When they hear that name, two things stand out, one of which is Emeka Ujuku, the late Emeka Ujuku, who some describe as the Biafran warlord. And another would probably be Ojuku Transport Company. But before those two was one man named Odumegu Ojuku. And his nephew is here with me in the studio today. He's the writer Ifeze, who's put together this book that tries to capture the essence of the man. And the lessons I read from it is what we'll be talking about today. Uh, in Quest of Perpetuities, the book, and the author is Ifeze. It's nice to have you on Seriously Speaking. Thank you, Anesu. Thank you for being here. I mean, you flew all the way from Abuja to be on set. I appreciate that. That means that to you, this is very important, obviously. Is the that because... You're giving me is a big privilege. <laughs> yes, I, <laughs> I know. I wouldn't uh, pass over. Because the book was sent to me, just like that, read it, you know, and I'm like, okay. But Tunji, who's the general manager at our studios here at Ultima Studios, was very certain that if I read this book, I will review it. And I said, okay, not a problem. And I took time to read it. And you're here. But first, your name is not, okay, I have on screen, this is the man on, in whose honor you've written this book. That's, uh, looks very much like his son, though, the one that we all know. That's Emeka Ujuku. You agree that he looks like him a lot? Oh, yes. And he looks like your mom, too. We'll see pictures of her as we go along. But yes. why, Ifeze is your name, but I'm sure it's more than one name that you have. Yes. My names are actually if, Ifeze, Ifani Chuku. Ikechuku, Ezeyanata, Obi. So you have to pick the one that <laughs> suits we'll you. We'll stick fancy. with the phaser because that's, this is your first attempt at writing. Now, it's not like you're an author, you're a missionary. And what drove you to decide to put this down? Well, I had a short experience of the man. Short? 12 years, eh? Not, How old are you? not quite 12 years, okay. maybe about three good. Impressionable, okay, direct, impressionable years. Uh, like you find in the book, anybody with any aptitude to study, to learn, had a scholarship. So at the time I came into that scholarship, I was about 10, 11. Oh, but you had so, heard of him, of, of course. Of course, I've lived with him before, but to have a closer contact with him, mm -hmm. uh, I would say that the, the last three years, of his life um, was my best three years of knowing the man. Of knowing him. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, I, I do, I mean, why did you decide to write the book? Mm -hmm. Why? Maybe you will understand that this way if I said I felt led to write the book. Yeah. And that's, that's a, a Christianese. Yeah, you know? it's a Christianese, uh, but it's, it's from the heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, because he gave to all, including his country, but all seem to forget him. The, the most important point of that journey was when I came home to Nigeria in 2007, and I was speaking with Mr. Akintola Williams in his library, and... Akintola Williams, incidentally, was his first accountant. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, he was his accountant throughout his, life. The, his business. Uh, so he picked on a book in his uh, shelf that talked about modern 
makers of Nigeria or builders of modern Nigeria. And both of us searched through the book. We couldn't even find one mention of Chief Odumuju. Of Sao Dumuju. It wasn't Buju. Chief, it was the Sao Sir. Dumuju, yes. And it did not only shock him, but it shocked me too. And well, one thing led to the other. And um, we found some good Western books, like with somebody like Tom Forrester, you know, an economic historian. And he critically mentions his name, but not to any depth. OK. Uh, That's it. Mentions Ojuku's name. Yes, Saudumi Ojuku's name. And I would say that's where the journey really started. At first, I thought of being a missionary. <laughs> I thought of writing a, a biography of his last wife, Saudumi Ojuku's last wife, called Lady Virginia mm -hmm. Mbanu Ojuku. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that lady lived like better than uh, first ladies of countries. And from that height, when the man died, she now went down to the level of Mother Teresa. Oh, wow. She's alive today, and she's doing very well within the Catholic Church. So that was my first interest, if I was going to write anything. Mm -hmm. So for you, you had to seek the, the, the approval or the support of family to put this together. I guess that's because there were some financial implications to doing what you had to do. Or did you need that permission to do it? I'm a member of the family, so... Yeah, forget uh, your, your mother, the, your the mother, is mother is Winifred, who is the yes. younger sister yes. to uh, Sir Ojuku. Yes. Okay, I mean, now we've talked about why and who you are. I'd like to take a break so that I can return to the facts that are contained in this book, which I feel have very much, I mean, very, a lot of relevance to Nigerians. So if you don't mind, I'll take a break now. Certainly. And we'll be back in a short while, continuing our conversations with Ifeze, who is the author of... In perpetuity, in quest, quest of, of perpetuity. perpetuity. He said, bio sketches of Sir Odumegu Ojuku. We'll be right back. Now, welcome back. I'm still in the studio with Ifeze, and uh, I, I, in choosing the title in quest for perpetuity, I wondered what that meant. Did this man want the world never to forget him? And the route he chose was quite strange. He chose to bequeath all he had to his company rather than his children? Oh, not entirely all. Yeah. Um, he bequeathed 30% of the shares of his company to his children. Okay. That's all he bequeathed to them. Yeah. And the rest were... The bulk. The bulk <laughs> was on the company. Because he wanted the company to survive in perpetuity after he's gone. Mm -hmm. He wanted to set up companies like the Joe, uh, Jay Allen of his time, Mandela's mm -hmm. and Caraberry's of his time, whose original founders were no longer uh, Absolutely. active at, uh, in those uh, 50s and 60s, but the companies were going strong. He really set up his company to do the same. So why would you say, I mean, reading this book, though, um, what would you, he described himself as a comet, you know, mm -hmm. from the account that you gave. Yes. And it turned out to be something like that. He just came, acquired so much so quickly, mm. and then he was gone, boom, like that. He was 50, he was in his 50s when he died. Mm, he was about 56. Mm -hmm. mm. 56 when he died. Yeah. But he had achieved so much. He has achieved so much. Yes, um, he did call himself a comet. You know, his audience, his little nephews, nephews and, and nieces, nieces. Yeah. He, he used it to encourage them that they should get the best out of him while he's alive. Mm -hmm. You know, encouraging them to study and encouraging them to reach for the stars, you know, um, but there's so much we don't understand about human nature because it's a proper description of his lifespan. Mm -hmm. And did he know it? I don't know. Because he was like but, a man in a hurry. Mm. He was barely in his 20s when he started his business, and then the business became so successful. He pulled everybody from his family. But you know, I want to read a segment of the book, which I find quite interesting. It was an account by... A Yoruba man, you know, his son, no, I think it was his, his son, Yoboma, was giving you an account. Okay. And he said, when I first, this somebody, okay, when I first met the first indigenous managing director of the NNSL, which is Nigerian National Shipping Line, Mr. Nathaniel Oyeshiku, he made such an eloquent testimony to Sir Odumegu's fairness to all in Nigeria 
especially to himself, that's him, Oyesiku, during his appointment to the post. He informed me that Sir Odumegu, in spite of many Igbo first officers in the Merchant Navy, settled for and chose him a Yoruba man. He knew for this job. So, I mean, he was such a detribalized man. You Completely. cannot describe, I mean... This... Completely, but a great Igbo patriot. Yes, but yes, he was a patriot, but he, yeah. didn't, he never compromised no. the nation. No. You know. He loved Nigeria. He, he, he probably won... died for Nigeria. He probably died for Nigeria. He did die for Nigeria. Because if Nigerians read this book, they'll see mm. why. Tell me how. Mm. Um, Yuboma, you mentioned, yes. is a very critical name in the Odumegu Ojuku story. Okay. Because the Ugoma father uh, was very instrumental in the education of uh, yeah, Sao Dume Goju. Absolutely. Yeah. But um, talking about his patriotism, uh, Sao Dume Gojuku is a fearless person. He didn't fear anybody except God. And Even though he never went to church, he didn't go to church on a regular well, basis. There were psychological influences on him which stayed with him through life. That's what I discovered. Uh, but if you want me to tell that story, I'll go, I'll go back to that one. I like um, religious stories much uh -huh. more. I wondered, though, the little that you glimpsed of him in the three years you stayed actively with him, what was it that made him such a patriotic Nigerian? Because you see him in this picture, for example, he's wearing um, the Yoruba outfit. Yes. His business was here in Lagos, although he was servicing the West and East. And all his investments largely were here in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Could that be why, for example, from what I read in this book, it appears it wasn't really for the war. It wasn't really for secession. Well, let me take you a little bit back to the story. Akintala Williams himself said that he's the only man he ever knew who would go abroad on holidays every single year and had multi-million pounds to buy properties anywhere else. But he refused to buy properties anywhere else except Nigeria. That's how patriotic mm -hmm. he is. That's how focused he is. That's how much he was committed to Nigeria. And I think he gave Akintola Williams his first break, really. Well, um, I'll let Mr. Williams say that himself. No, because, I mean, but, he was a young accountant oh, yeah. who firms, I mean, the John Holt and all the other big companies yes. of this world wouldn't take him. Yeah. But he did. There's no doubt. There's mm -hmm. no doubt he helped him a lot. Mm -hmm. Mr. Williams refers to him as my great friend. We've been discussing with... Um, Mr. Ifeze, the book, In Quest of Perpetuity, Biosketches of Sir Odumegu Ujuku, the comet that has refused to be forgotten because he had a nephew and a man called Ifai Chukubi. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Adesua. We'll see you again next week. Bye.